Welcome to High Impact Growth, a podcast from Demagi about the role of technology in creating a world where everyone has access to the services they need to thrive. I'm Amy Vaccaro, Senior Director of Marketing at Demagi and your co-host. In recent episodes, we've had the privilege to hear from community health workers directly, with stories from Jared, Lawrence, and Maruka, 3CHWs supported by Lawala, and most recently, Margaret O'Dara. Today, we're continuing this series. Joining me today is Dr. Brian Dorenzi, Demagi's Global Director of Research, and our special guest, Gaia Muhila, who worked with Demagi in the early days of ComCare back in 2008 in Tanzania. For those of you who've been avid listeners to this podcast, you may recall episode 10, where we delved into the origins of ComCare. In that episode, we pointed out that Gaia's voice was missing from that conversation, as were the voices of the community health workers who were early testers of ComCare. And this is something we're rectifying today. This episode showcases highlights from five conversations that Gaio conducted, speaking directly with the earliest users of ComCare about their experiences with our solution. This research brings us back to the time when Brian, Gaio, and others were working diligently under the mango tree at the Kabata Health Facility in Tanzania, designing and testing ComCare alongside community health workers. And of course, that early work gave birth to the concept of design under the mango tree that defines how we engage users in designing our products. ComCare isn't your typical SaaS product. Its roots and unique development journey truly set it apart, something you'll appreciate as you delve into the evolution from its early days to its present form. We hope you enjoy this deep dive into the history and the voices that have shaped ComCare. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast. Today we have a really special episode. I'm joined by Brian Dorenzi, who leads Demagi's research and data team, who you've heard from before. And we have a very special guest, Gaio Muhila who is here to talk to us about a project he ran recently where he reconnected with some of the earliest testers of ComCare who were community health workers in Tanzania who worked with us under the mango tree to test and use and give feedback on ComCare. So, Gail, can you introduce yourself and a bit about how your work has intersected with Demagis over the years? Yeah, sure. Thank you. As I mentioned, my name is Gail Mbila. Uh, I was connected with the Maggie in 2008, working at the early stage of home care, where I was involved in recruiting and also training the community health workers on the use of home care application on their phones, how they perform their home-based care services. And so for this project that we're going to be talking about in this episode, you went back to Dar in Tanzania near the Kabata Health Facility, I believe, and you met with some of those first community health workers who were testing and using ComCare. I think you had five different conversations. You recorded them, you transcribed them. We want to kind of hear about those conversations and hear about what you learned. Um, So maybe set the scene for us and share a little bit about who did you meet with and where did this all happen? Yes, actually, I was lucky to be one of the person who went back to Kibada area in Kijamboni district. And I happened to go to the Kibada facility and did meet some of the earliest community health workers. There were a number of other people who were part of the team that we worked together. And it was an exciting time because some of them have moved on to other roles, but they could remember a number of these things as community health workers. So they did talk about what they were doing at that time and what they are doing right now and why they were interested to be community health workers. Awesome. And so let's start there. You asked them, you know, why did they become community health workers? Can you share a bit about what you heard of why? these five community health workers got into the field. Yeah, they were very moved by the work of community health workers based on the problem of HIV and other chronic allergy diseases, such as diabetes. And some of them had some tuberculosis problems. So it was a range of chronic problems with those patients. That's why there were a number of organization working with the Ministry of Health, they created a program of community-based care where they recruit members from the community 
to become helpful to their fellow members in the area. So the mental health workers were trained in order to go house to house, first of all, identifying if they are people who are sick and try to encourage them to go seek care at the health facilities, but also the community health workers were going to the health facilities to receive best training on how to take care of the patient at home. And so community health workers decided to join the program because they wanted to help their fellow community members, their relatives, and other people around their villages on the streets. So they received the training of six weeks and then they joined the program. And what motivated them was actually they wanted to help their fellow community members. One thing I wanted to bring up was in the early days of ComCare, Kai and I spent a lot of time with different community health programs that existed in Tanzania. So the particular program that we were working with in Kibata, Kaya, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the specific focus there was around supporting HIV positive individuals. The health workers, the community health workers there were specifically tasked with going and following up with members of the community who were HIV positive, you know, providing social support and encouragement to keep up with the medicines and regimens that they'd been prescribed. And check for all the things that Gaia mentioned, check for additional sickness, do some referrals to the health facility, et cetera. Yeah, I think, Brian, there was a range of problems that made community health workers to join the program. Some of these issues may not be HIV related. HIV was one of the issues that I, I remember even visiting people who had you. For example, there were a number of people who had stroke, for example. Okay. People had stroke. And so community health workers would play a role of going to the household and of course talk to the members to make sure that people take person who had a stroke to hospital. But also providing some simple exercise, okay, to make sure that people be exercised. If you remember correctly. At the time when we went to Paria Court earlier with community health work, visiting some clients, and I wouldn't call them patients because community health workers would never call those people as patients. They would say they are clients. For the moment you say patients, you are somehow introducing stigma to the community. They are clients. Those were their clients. And so we went there and there were people who would have high blood pressure, for example, they would remind them to take medications for high blood pressure. They reminded people to take tests for diabetes. And people who had HIV, for example, would be reminded to take their medications regularly. Because once you start the regimen of HIV, you have to take that every day. And so they will remind the time to make sure they do not skip the medication, especially when you have to get your refill. Okay, you have to go, they will remind people to go get the medication at the hospital whenever they needed it. And sometimes some of the community workers would even go to the health facility, get the medication, bring to the household for their patients when it was necessary to do so. Yeah, and I think, Guy, I think that's so important. I think the piece that you're highlighting, if I were to generalize it, is just how skilled and passionate these community health workers were. I mean, this wasn't just a I need a job. This was the first one I saw available, so I took it. The people we were working with, community health workers, they were actively engaged in their community. They cared about people. They went above and beyond sort of the standard job description to make sure that people were getting tested, to make sure that the, the in charge at the health facility understood what was happening in the community to help reduce that stigma. It really resonates and kind of underscores the importance of the work that the community health workers are doing. And they're the thing that matters in community health programs is how good the community health workers are. So we need to be doing everything we can to, to support them and make sure that they have all the tools that they need. Yeah. And one of the interesting parts I remember just visiting, uh, talking to community health workers and even in the early days, visiting with them in the household, it took time before a client 
disclosed to be HIV positive, for example, before the client disclosed they had a relative who was HIV positive at that time. So the first thing they did was to create a relationship. It took months and sometimes a week before the person disclosed to say, actually, I tested for HIV positive. Or actually, I have this. It was easier for other problems. People could talk about it. If it's tuberculosis issue, more people could talk about it. But we were very it was time. And community affairs would find even main time for either the person they are serving in the general person. Like that's an area I think which the work of community affairs is very important when it comes to the point of helping a person by not knowing exactly the disease. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And to put in that time and energy to build that relationship and build that level of comfort so that in, you know, we're, we're speaking specifically about HIV and we're speaking about a time that was, you know, 15 plus years ago. So to get to the amount of stigma that existed in the community and in the country around HIV and, and to really build the relationship and get the trust required to be able to disclose that. Yeah, and I remember once people understand what this is happening to health workers, he's providing services for people who are chronically ill. That was the term that was used during the village meeting when they were introducing these community health workers. Usually, they go to a village meeting and then the leaders of the village will introduce the person who has been training as the community health workers. That here is the person who has gone for training and he's a community health worker in our community here. He will be coming around households to help you with some community health education. So people you know this person is going out around to help people who are chronically ill. And that's why we, they didn't really mention specifically about HIV directly, because the moment people saw the person going with that probably bad, then people, they associate that in that household, there is somebody who is probably HIV positive. And so they were trying to always remind the people that they are serving chronically ill patients, not necessarily HIV patients. So that we use the stigma, and that's why you always fear chronically ill patients as a term that was used very much. At the same time, when we brought the use of compare for the first time, our worry, we were discussing like, okay, how are they going to take this? It was very much the opposite. Because they used to carry a bag with all the books and then the paper screening form. But when we introduced Nokia, actually, and the, the first phone we used, everybody had phones at that time, at least in the village. So even when they sat down with the patient to start going through those screening questions, Nobody could actually notice that the community health workers is disturbing a client here because people would look at the person with their phone and just going through the phone is different from somebody who is holding a piece of paper. People would wonder what's happening in that house. If somebody is asking questions, this is one of the examples how home care helps. The community health workers. I think that's so interesting. And I, I did see that in the transcriptions. So these are community health workers that had been using paper for their visits. And the paper was like quite hefty, right? And so when they would show up at someone's home, it created this. And at the time, there was a lot of stigma around HIV status or sickness status. And so people would feel embarrassed that a community health worker was at their home. And when they switched to testing out ComCare, they were able to get this much smaller phone, and it was a lot more discreet in terms of why they were in somebody's home. I'd love to hear a bit more from you, Gaio, around what were some of the things, and I know that was one of the areas of questions that you asked, what were some of the themes that you heard around reactions and responses to ComCare back in, this is 2008? That's a good question. 
It actually took me all the way back when we introduced Pompeii for the first time in Kibada area under the mango tree. I mean, the first thing we actually had requested their paper forms so that we could match exactly what was in their paper form, put it electronically, but also telling them that we can even automate some of the things that they were required to do manually. Yeah, for example, counting the number of patients. So the phone would give them how many patients they have visited. One of the interesting things that came up very quickly was the issue of privacy. And I remember people talked, they had this like big notebook where they would write down the initial of their patients because they did not want other members in the family to identify their clients. And they had to remember with those initials. So when we talked about the form, what they said, okay, if somebody got a hold of this form, would they be able to see list of my clients? And they remember immediately they wanted to have a password in the application. And that's when we came up with a login password for Compare, right in Ikiban. And we separated it between a demo side and the side where they could actually record their clients, where they could put a password. And then kind of, if somebody gets a hold of that, their phones, they didn't have to worry that they would see their clients. That was an interesting part. And the other part that actually was also very much of interest to the community at workers from Compare was the referral. When they went and asked a series of questions, Comcare would somehow prompt that give a referral to this client. And they would then record which referral is that. So whenever they gave a referral, they could actually see the kind of referral that had been given to a client. That was the second part. And the third part, because whenever they gave a referral to a client, they were required to come back to see if that patient has actually gone to the health facility. If not, they continued to emphasize the importance of going to the health facility. So what happened was we compare it to remind the community health workers that these are the clients you gave referral and these are the clients you should make follow up to see if they actually went to the health facility. And I think that was very interesting as we worked on compare with community health workers. This is great stuff, Guy. I'm so impressed at how much you remember. And obviously you had a chance to talk to the community health workers and get some more information, but I think those are two important points that you raised. I just want to restate them quickly. One is that by having Comcare, they were able to suggest the feature and we were able to add the, the feature of having a password so that everything was password protected so that they moved from having these paper notebooks that were open to anybody's peering eyes, even though they tried to obfuscate it a little bit by using just some initials instead of the full name. So there was an added level of privacy that, that came in with Comcare and the digital tool. And then I think the second piece that you're bringing up is a really good point too, which is without Comcare, without the digital tool, there was nothing to remind them to go and follow up with patients who required some sort of follow-up. Like, for example, they were referred to the health facility to go get an HIV test and, or some other test or get some additional educations or things. And the tool was able to remind them to go and follow up with that person, whereas previously they would have had to try to remember themselves or make a note in their notebook and hope that they check in and were able to, to get there in a timely manner. And actually, I've got a couple of like direct quotes, or these are obviously translations of the quotes, but I want to read one on this theme of privacy. And they say that the phone ensures privacy because it is mine and it is always with me. But with papers you may leave somewhere or even in the cupboard, anybody can pick it up and read it. But any information in this phone is ours, only me and you and where I send the reports. My clients understood and they liked this. Another quote on the same theme. 
My customers received it very well because it had no humiliation. When you go to the patient, you don't hold anything. So really that privacy theme came through. I think another thing I, I was looking at in the responses, and maybe this has to do with kind of automating some of the work and the referral workflow that you both mentioned is just general, the way that Comcare was able to help reduce their workload. It was easy to use and it was actually able to like help streamline their efforts, which I really liked seeing. Yeah. Amy, the other piece that was suggested that at first, when we introduced Comcare, they had to go back, help to their supervisors. And just remember, community health workers were in the community and their supervisor was always at the nearby health facility. So at first, when we introduced home care at the community, they had to go back. They would use home care and then they had to go back to their supervisor with a summary sheet as a report to their supervisor. So then they requested saying, is it possible to create a supervisor tool for our supervisor to be able to see the work we do using compare? And that's when we started thinking, actually, we have one piece here. And so I think Brian, they worked very hard to design a supervisor or tool with the community health workers and their supervisors as to what kind of information the supervisor would like to see from the community. And then we created a tool that actually helped a lot to bring acceptance of compare at the supervisor level. But then they started seeing how many patients have been visited, how many patients have been given referrals. They had the statistics every day they could run whenever they wanted to know the kind of service that has been provided by the community health workers every day. Yeah, I love that. So just the supervisors were getting much better visibility and able to kind of understand the work and get that in real time. So many of the features that we take for granted in ComCare and that are useful across the world and in various ComCare deployments have their origin story in the co-design that, that Gaio and I were doing back then. The supervisor, even the idea of building another application for supervisors, that wasn't something we came up in with necessarily. It was something that emerged out of this collaboration. We previously mentioned the passwords and the referral tracking, and there's just so many of these features came out of the relationship, Gaio, that you were able to build with the community health workers who in turn built a relationship with the community and the relationship, Gaia, that you had with the community health workers, the trust that you engendered with them really enabled them and empowered them, allowed them to participate as equals in the design process to bring these, these additional features that they wanted to ask for, for these things. And I think that's the role that you, Gaia, played in this, I think is really important to highlight, but to shift the focus momentarily back to, or kind of back to the community health workers, it's really, it's their tool. It's their work. Our job is to empower these community health workers and to strengthen the work that they're doing to amplify the impact that they're having. And so it was really about listening to them and letting them drive where so much of this goes, because they're the ones who come in with the passion, the relationship with the community, the knowledge and the energy to make this change. It reminded me the design part of the company application I mean, at first, when there were only forms that you could fill and submit. And I remember Ryan sitting under that mango tree where they said, how will we get a list of our patients? We need to keep a list of our patients, right? And so we're like, okay, we thought we were just filling this form and submit. And that's when we came up with a case, a tour where we can keep a record of the patients there. And designing those, what we call the paper prototype, it's my favorite part that I remember all the time. Yes, they are not probably IT guys. These community health workers, they are just people who are not well-educated, probably. 
But if you give them a chance, give them a piece of paper and say, how do you like the application to be? They'll just draw down what they think the application should be or should look like and just put in a piece of paper, very simply, and say, if we did this and this, and there were a lot of drawings and the papers, and then we would use those to turn into the design of the application. And I think that was very interesting where a community health workers take a piece of paper with a pen and say, oh, can we have it do this and do that? And that was very interesting to involve people in the designing moment. That's so cool. I love hearing these stories, Gaio. And essentially what you just described sounds like the genesis of case management within ComCare, which is one of the most important things that ComCare can do is create a case around a person so that you can follow up and, and follow them over time. I want to read one other quote that kind of stuck out to me from your interviews, Gaio, that really just speaks to how momentous that shift from paper to digital was. And they write, they said, we were so encouraged when ComCare came before we were gathering patients' information using papers about six forms, so we were bringing six books with us as we visited patients. There were referral forms, patients' information like age. It was hard, and once you're with the patient, you're supposed to fill in one book after the other. But after having this calm care, for sure it came to simplify our work because all the forms were in the phone and we were trained on how to use the phones. So I love that. And Gail, if we think about sort of creating digital comfort and literacy, and what did you hear from these community health workers and what did you see in terms of how did their experience using ComCare kind of help them? Did it help them get more comfortable with technology? And how did they speak about that? Thank you. That's an interesting question, Amy. We had the community health workers who had knowledge on how to use a phone, but we had a number of community health workers who had never used a phone before. They could read and write, but they didn't have access to the mobile phone. So I remember what we did was the first time we entered into the community was first to identify and know which community health workers have knowledge about the use of a mobile phone. And so the way we would do it, we would take a person who has never used a phone before, the person who has used a phone put them together in a pair. And then we actually asked a community health worker to train the other community health workers on how to use a phone. The first training we, we provided was how to use a mobile phone, the regular user for mobile phone. And it was much easier for their fellow community health workers to train another community of workers rather than me training a community of workers. That was the first part. In the second part, we had drawings. We had flip charts where we drew a picture of a mobile phone with buttons. And then we had it to actually map each button with the use of which button. And say, here's the button. When you press here, you actually, you hang up a call. Here's the button. If you press this, you make a call. Here's the button. So I have a picture of those drawings that we map. And they will just put on the wall in a training place. People will start playing with their phones as part of practice. As a result, Brian, you may remember this. Because they wanted to practice using Com Care, they requested, they didn't want to mix the information they put in for practice with the real information where they are patients. They requested to have two sides of the application. They, we call it a demo, and they, they even requested it to put a reminder you are actually entering using a demo. Demo for only practicing purposes. Demo is not for really patient. If you're actually visiting your client, switch login using a password so that you can provide service to the client. So that was the kind of training that we provided. Yeah, we learned so much in those trainings. And two fun stories that I remember, Gaio, from, from our time was, one, the Nokia phones that we were using 
with one of the projects, there was a big center button. So there was kind of the four arrow directions and then the whole keypad below that. And in the middle of the four arrow directions was the big center button. And we didn't have a good name for that button. And I think it was with the community health workers that we decided that we would call that the belly button of the phone. So that was the word that we used in Swahili was we're going to press this button here, the belly button as the center button. And that's how you accept things. And the, the second story I remember was training around delete because there was a problem or a UI bug, but maybe feature of those early Nokia phones where if you selected the application and you unintentionally hit one of the contextual menus, it would pop up another menu and everything was in English. So if they unintentionally press the belly button as a phone, then it goes to delete. There's a confirmation that pops up and the first thing that's highlighted is yes. So if they just keep mashing that belly button, they'll accidentally delete the application, which happened at kind of later stages. And so we had to train on the word delete and what it meant. And I remember the training that we ended up with after working with these community health workers was, look, if you take a piece of paper and you throw it in the rubbish bin, that's not delete because you can always go to the rubbish bin, pull out the piece of paper, figure out what it said again. Delete is as, as if you lit this thing on fire and, and the whole thing burned up and, and there was nothing left. Uh, so let's make sure we don't delete. So yeah, there were a lot of good learnings from training, but again, like you were saying, the community health workers were so good at training other community health workers that we, not only did we learn how to design the application from them and have all these features that we added, but we also learned how to train and teach. I wanted to share a couple of the quotes that kind of jumped out to me from those interviews, Gaio, around using technology. So one community health worker described that, you know, after using CompCare, they were able to start using other digital tools. And she said, CompCare enlightened me and built me up. And another one wrote or said, today I use my smartphone for so many things. I use Google, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook, so many things, but I got experience from ComCare. So it's kind of cool to see like just all of that intensive training that you did kind of led to this more comfortability with technology. So Gaio, I'm curious, curious to hear like what's your message and not just for Demagi, but for our broader audience, like what would you want our audience to know and be thinking about? Well, I think from my side, based on the experience we've had so far with the Bimage and even other organizations working on the digital world, my suggestion is we need to digitize a hundred percent of our health services. So we need to have a link from the community to the health facility and to the referral hospitals. It should all be connected. This will help a lot in terms of understanding where the case was identified at the community. A second point of care at the health center or a dispensary, for example, if there was a referral to a hospital so that you have a complete loop of digital information. I'm very grateful for the market specifically. In looking at how much it has grown as a company, but also looking at home care. And I've used home care recently on other cases, apart from community health workers. I've used it for surveys in Kenya, for example. I've used it as a data collection tool as well. And the work I think Dimagi has done to develop home care, it's something that needs to be supported very much in terms of the capacity, but also scale at the national level. How do we scale compare at the national level, for example? If a country wanted to use a digital tool, can they rely on compare today to use at the community level, at the dispensary level, at the referral hospital level? How can you make sure there's an interoperability between Comcare and the other tools that are available? So basically integration, I'm talking of the interoperability where data can be moved from one platform to another so that these different platforms can talk to each other. That I think is something that needs to be encouraged. Absolutely. These are all 
visions that I think we share as well in terms of really creating more seamless connection between health providers to better support patient care and also ensuring all the tools can talk to each other. Thank you so much, Gaia. Thanks, Gaia. It was really fantastic. And it's wonderful to have you on here as someone who is so critical to developing ComCare, to interfacing with the communities where we were working, et cetera. And it, it just makes me think that Demagi is a technology company. And on this podcast, we talk about technology. We talk about new things in technology or how technologies affected things or the origin of certain technology pieces. But so much of this over this conversation with you today, so much has kind of reminded me that it really all boils down to relationships, whether it's the relationships that the community health workers are able to build with the community, or it's the relationships that you, Gaio, are able to build with the community health workers. The whole thing is about building tools to support uh, innate compassion and dedication that these community health workers have for the health of their peers and fellow community members. And so I think it can be easy to get distracted by the technology piece, but at the end of the day, it's really just about the humans. Thank you to Gaio and Brian for joining us today. Here are a few of my takeaways and reflections from today's conversation. At its core, technology is about enhancing human relationships. This is particularly evident when considering the stigma the community health workers confront when dealing with diseases like HIV. Their role hinges on fostering trust within the community, a challenging yet vital aspect of their job that they are uniquely positioned to do. In this light, we discussed how ComCare offers privacy and discretion. Rather than carrying large, conspicuous paper registers, community health workers can now use a small, discreet mobile device thus improving not only data security, but also the perception of their role within the community. This is just one of the ways that digitizing health workflows has improved efficiency and dignity in community health work. Success for a digital health tool means creating value for every user. From streamlining the workflow for community health workers to providing better oversight for supervisors, Comfort has proven its worth at multiple levels, and I loved hearing this. Today's discussion vividly paints the picture of what designing with users truly looks like. As reiterated by Raj Kumar in a recent episode, sitting with the people you aim to serve and collaboratively crafting solutions to improve their jobs is vital. We call it design under the mango tree at Damagi. Moreover, the benefits of digital health tools extend beyond efficiency. Tools like ComCare foster digital literacy, and with 70% of community health workers being women, it's easy to envision the ripple effect of empowering women through technology. And lastly, Gaio emphasized the potential of fully digitizing health services from community to facility and to government levels. Interoperability is essential for maximum impact, a concept that we at Demagi and as creators of ComCare care deeply about. That's our show. Please like, rate, review, subscribe, and share this episode if you found it useful. It really helps us grow our impact. And write to us at podcast at demagi.com with any ideas, comments, or feedback. This show is executive produced by myself. Danielle Van Wick is our producer. Brianna DeRoos is our editor. And cover art is by Sinan Chukon. 